Hello, good morning, and happy after Thanksgiving. Uh, we are so excited. I am Megan Shank from Three Lagoons Realty, and we have David Moya from Video Sales Real Estate, and we are kicking off our podcast, interviewing the wonderful members of the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce and community members. And today we are so excited to have Ari Novi, the president and CEO of the San Diego Botanic Gardens, lined up. Um, so we're going to talk about some exciting things going on. Yeah. Hey, good morning, everybody. All right. Thanks for being on the show. I'm so excited to be here. Happy after Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I'm so excited um, to talk more about the Botanic Gardens. Um, we love it as community members and you've got some exciting things going on. So um, can you tell us how did you get started? How did this you get started with the San Diego Botanic Garden? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm, a, I'm kind of a plant guy. Um, I have a, a, believe it or not, a PhD in plant biology. I, you know, I love plants so much that I studied them for, for more than a decade. Um, and I come from a, a family of florists, and that's probably kind of where that got going. Um, and I, I managed, you know, after I finished graduate school to find my way into working in botanic gardens. Um, and so I spent a while working at the, our National Botanic Garden in Washington, D.C., which, uh, which I also actually ran. Um, and then I moved out to California uh, initially for a job um, at the Leastag Foundation here in Encinitas, um, who I think is also involved with the chamber in Carlsbad. Um, and then when the when the long term director of San Diego Botanic Garden, Julian Duvall, retired after 24 years um, and, and they said they were looking for a new um, director, um, president and CEO. I said, well, you know, I love botanic gardens. and I love this garden. And, and I threw my hat in the ring and I was fortunate enough to get the job. Well, how does how do, I mean, that's amazing history like like your family history has been in, uh, you know, uh, plants and flowers and whatnot. It's like, it, it's such a unique thing. I, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that sentence before in my life. That's so awesome. How did that, how did that start for your family? Oh, that's a great story. My great grandfather, a guy named Carl Brenner, um, who was born on the Lower East Side of New York, uh, in Manhattan. Um, he met my great grandmother, um, a woman named Sylvia and wanted to get married. Um, and so we're talking about, you know, very early 1920s and um and she said she wouldn't marry somebody who wasn't a business owner and at the time at the time he was driving a <laughs> and he you know i guess as they did in those days he went to his local hangout and said hey i really want to marry this woman and she won't marry me i'm not a business owner here's how much money i have you know to his friends what kind of business can i own and somebody said oh hey there's a flower stall for sale at, at the train station in newark new jersey um and he said i can't afford that and so he went and he bought bought this business in Newark, New Jersey, as a florist, and learned how to be a florist. And if you know, four generations later, my family were still florists. So to get a, to get a girl, I mean, like like most things in life happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is such a cool story. Uh, what what a stud! <laughs> it worked out. It worked out. They were married. I, yeah, they were married a long time 60, 68 years or so. That is had. awesome. <laughs> Oh, that just made my day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, um, <laughs> uh, well, tell us now, how, what are your roles and responsibilities at the garden? Yeah. So, you know, I, 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 I have a great job, right? You know, um, botanic gardens are, are really public gardens that we have throughout the country and the world that have, you know, what I consider to, to be really three main functions. Um, one is that we, we collect plants and we have plant collections that are available for study and education and science. And our collection at San Diego Botanic Garden is amazing. We have almost 5,000 different kinds of plants, which is amazing. Uh, you know, if you think about that, just to put it into context, there's about 1,900 species of plant, you know, a little less than 2,000 in all of San Diego County naturally. And so we've aggregated, you know, you know, multiple times that in just one small 35 acre, 37 acre location. So we have a really amazing plant collection um, that we do um, use for studying and education. Um, and then, of course, we're here for other kinds of education, too. We, 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 work, we love working with school kids, especially doing active children's play, um, so, so kids can feel comfortable in nature and can you know, grow up and understand how to steward these amazing natural resources that, that we have and that we, of course, have a lot of challenges these days dealing with um, sustainably. And then the third thing um, is that we're a place I think of as uncommon beauty and um, serenity. 
And I think that that's one of the most important things that we do for the community is we provide that place, whether it's you're having a great day and you just want to share that with a friend or family member and then walk around the garden with them is, is in order or you're going through a tough time in your life and you need a place where you feel, you know, that you're in nature and, and, and you can use the calming influence of nature to help you out. We provide that, too. Um, so so I'm always watching those three things. And, you know, are we doing them well? Can we do them better? How do we bring the proper resources to bear? Um, and how can we serve the community best with with those um, goals that we have? Well, I'm going to share some news with you. I'm I'm a, I'm a member and, uh, and pass was a member pass holder. And uh, first time I went there, I went there because my wife was um, we had a we had well we have two daughters now, but our firstborn um, was was we were looking for some fun things to do locally, and we had never gone, you know, uh, and and so she's like. You have to check this place out. It like is ridiculous how beautiful. It literally takes you away to another planet, uh, and walking through the the gardens and like seeing the different um, I don't know what they're called, but lands. I'm gonna just call them lands where they ju- you know you're in you're like you feel like you're in the tropics, but then you feel you know you go down the down this this road or this little sidewalk, and then you hit the deserts or something like that. So. And, and uh, it's such an amazing place for kids. But my point of why I started going on a ramble there is I was floored by just how amazing the place is. Um, we became members, you know, th- that day we, we went and saw it. And um, for this, my wife's second time, my first time. And um, yeah, it's such a great investment. Well, I mean, first of all, thank you for your membership. Um, we're so fortunate to have so many members here from the community and, and we do serve our membership, you know, first and foremost, and it's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's, you know, that's what we, you know, what, that's exactly what we want. I mean, people come in here, they often don't know. I mean, I have people who live down the street who've never been into the garden and they come and go, wow, we just really didn't know this was here. And, um, and they're really amazed at what we do. And so it's, it's, it's a great privilege for me to run and for all of us here to work at an institution that's so dedicated to the community um, and that, and that we get high marks from the community. People do come here and really approve of what we're doing. And, and so we, we feel like we're in this great positive you know, place of, you know, what can we do more and how can we get more people to benefit from this great resource that we have here? And Megan, obviously, she's her and I both live in Carlsbad and she she's a great resource for, for me. I'd be like, hey, have you been here with your kids? And she has older boys. So she's kind of like the trailblazer. And I go to her for suggestions. So I'm sure she has a similar story in regards to the gardens. We've, yeah, same thing. We've had uh, our membership for years. We've, from the, my kids in diapers, you know, checking out the boats and the Hamilton garden and the trains to the craft events to running around, you know, of course, all the Christmas holiday events that we'll talk about um, to even before we had kids and my husband and I would just go for a walk. Same thing, the serenity that you mentioned, you know, let's take a little afternoon and enjoy nature and, and see all these beautiful, you know, gifts that we have. And, um, and then we're five miles from home. So it, it's what a great way to spend the day or, you know, and then spend the evening as the holidays approach. So yeah, we, we've enjoyed it immensely. Thank you so much. And, you know, I get in my job, I get to brag about the garden a little bit, which is awesome. And, um, you know, we're just really lucky in this community. You know, our, uh, the garden, San Diego Botanic Garden was, was ranked as the ninth best botanic garden in North America by USA Today this year. And so to have this wow. sort of local treasure that has that level of, of national and international you know, recognition, you know, for its excellence is just, you know, just such a great thing for all of us. That's great. And it had to have that little treasure, like you said, in our backyard. That's pretty impressive. Definitely. Well, now, what is the history? I I don't even know myself, so I'm curious, but what is the history behind the San Diego Botanic Garden? Yeah, it's it's an interesting history. It's kind of unusual for botanic gardens, and it's also relatively young. Um, And so I sort of always think of, of our botanic garden as still in the process of becoming, which to me is exciting because it allows us to continue to refine what we're doing to suit, suit the needs of our community. Um, but it really started with a, a, a family, um, Ruth and Charles Larrabee, um, were, were, were residents here, and they owned a portion of the property that is currently San Diego Botanic Garden today. Um, and, you know, back in the, in the 50s, um, uh, mainly Ruth Larrabee, she decided that she wanted to leave the property to the county of San Diego to become, you know, really a wonderful park and horticultural center um, that was also dedicated to the conservation of the California quail. Um, mm-hmm. And at that time, there was no city of Encinitas. This was an unincorporated you know, part of the, of the county of San Diego. And so leaving it to the county um, and to allow the county's parks and rec division to kind of manage it as a as a you know, sort of a, a really amazing park um, was was sort of what they had in mind. 
And that's what happened for a while. So the county took over management of it, um, opened it up, um, and and really up through the, let's say, the very early, late 80s, they, the county managed it and, and did a great job. They had um, superintendents and ra- rangers here that loved plants and so added on to the plant collections that the Larrabees already established. Mm-hmm. And the Larrabees, you know, the way they lived on the land was, was light, kind of a light touch. So they planted really cool plants, but it wasn't like, you know, a big giant estate garden, um, you know, so there was a lot of room to, to, to really experiment and grow and create, you know, um, an environment that people would love. Um, and that, that happened. And then essentially in the, in the 80s, the county got into a little bit of financial difficulties and was looking to find ways to share some of the costs of, of, of um, you know, managing some of its resources for the public. And, you know, from the very beginning, there was a foundation um, called the Quail Botanical Garden Foundation that started to help the county, kind of a friends group. And starting in the late 80s and early 90s, they really began talking with the county and said, okay, what maybe we should stand up as a full nonprofit that's actually running the organization. Um, and, and that's essentially what happened in 1992. The, the Quail Botanic Garden Foundation hired its first full-time executive director. Um, and then the foundation became the, the management arm of the organization. Mm-hmm. Um, and then over time also added some more land. So, so today we have, you know, a, a full-fledged 37-acre facility. Um, we're, Matt, we're I run the nonprofit. I run a 501c3 nonprofit, California Benefit uh, Corporation, um, and then we operate under a land lease with both the County of San Diego and then a piece that we've acquired recently that's owned by the City of Encinitas. So that's sort of the 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 quick organizational history of the organization. Nice. Jeez, that's exciting. So you guys, you guys are. You mentioned it earlier, actually. Um, is it? part of a greater system of gardens? Yeah, well, you know, we're an independent nonprofit. So, you know, we, we, we don't formally report to anybody else, but mm-hmm. public gardens and botanic gardens are organized under several different um, umbrella organizations that we help each other out through our networks. Uh-huh. So in the United States, there's an organization called the American Public Gardens Association that we're a member of. And that, you know, brings together the, the you know, many public gardens in the United States. And, and we share, you know, um, uh, you know, best best management practices, and um, uh, we we through an, another allied organization called the American Horticultural Society. We have a reciprocal admissions program, so that if you buy membership, your membership that you both have here at San Diego Botanic Garden will actually get you into hundreds of gardens around the United States wow. that participate in this program. And likewise, if you're visiting the area and you have a membership in another garden elsewhere, we're, we're you, you know we we recognize that so you can come in for free. And so that's a that's a good program. And then also um, there's an international organization called Botanic Garden Conservation International, and that organization, which I happen to be the board chair of for the U.S. part of it, um, we we work with all the data. Right. So botanic gardens worldwide, we're trying to save all plants, you know, from extinction and, and mm-hmm. dangers. And so we collect all that data and then we actually transmit it to the United Nations and other, you know, big kind of organizations that, uh, you know, so that we can organize how botanic gardens fulfill our collective role. Um, and in that, we're, we're, there's about 4,500 botanic gardens worldwide. So it's actually a pretty large and amazing organization that's very decentralized and, and dedicated to making sure that all, all plants are saved and that all pu- humans have access to all the plant resources that we need. And did you guys go, was there like a name change or a shift? I feel like there was at some point. Yeah, so, so as I mentioned earlier, the, the nonprofit is technically called the Quail Botanic Garden Foundation. And so this was Quail Botanic Gardens for many, many years. Mm. And that was you know, based on R- Ruth Larrabee's wish for the gardens to not only be a horticulture center, but also to um, safeguard the California quail that she loved so much. Um, but then about 10 years ago, um, the folks who were running the garden at the time thought, you know, this garden has really grown beyond just a local garden. And it's really recognized as the premier botanical institution in the San Diego area. Um, and so the decision was made to change the name to San Diego Botanic Garden to really you know, reflect the stature, um, you know, in respect to which the garden had grown. Awesome. But a lot of people still call us quail. And it's always <laughs> said with, with, with a lot of affection. And I, I, I think it's great. <laughs> the, the locals, the older locals, always say, "Oh, quail! We love quail!" And, and, and I think it's fantastic. I don't, I don't mind having a sub brand. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> well, and what is the mission of the San Diego Botanic Garden? Not to be confused with Quail Gardens. <laughs> yeah, so our, our our mission is to inspire a, a love and play of, of plants and people of all ages. You know, so really, we're here to help people connect with nature and 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 the planty you know portion of nature. Um, and and help them realize how important it is for them in their lives and, and develop a lifelong passion for you know for that. 
And in this climate, it's awesome because I mean, it's like maybe the best gardening climate in the entire world, if not certainly the U.S. So <laughs> we're so lucky. People love plants here. And, and horticulture, uh, just for somebody who's who may not be up to speed with terminology like myself, I just Google it. So it's, it, I, it says the the art of practicing uh, of go, garden cultivation and management, right? Right. Right. And this is, you know, horticulture. It's got, it's a fancy word for gardening. And um, the, I like it. It's a cool, fancy name. I use it all day. <laughs> it's great. And, and, you know, this is one of the horticulture centers of the, of the, of the world, you know, North Coast San Diego. The, the climate here, um, you know, is so excellent for growing plants. You know, that's why this region, you know, was known as one of the flower capitals of the world. Um, but we still have that present, you know, especially in places like the flower fields, you know, in, in Carlsbad and, you know, here at the Botanic Garden. And, you know, you know, we have our very famous flower families, you know, with the Equis being the most prominent among them. Um, we're, we're, San Diego Botanic Garden abuts, you know, the, main, the original Equi Ranch, um, which is still there, although, although no longer owned by the Equis, and they're still breeding poinsettias there. Um, mm. You know, and so the poinsettia, which now we're all starting to see for the holidays, and we all love that, that, you know, the modern poinsettia was, was, was created here in Encinitas and grown mm. throughout North County, I'm San Diego, and 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 it's really a, a privilege and an honor to you know to operate a botanic garden in a place where horticulture is such an important part of the history of what we do. And what makes that what makes the climate so so unique or and so uh, uh, you know optimal? So it's um, it's a great question. So the best way I've heard it explained is that this is kind of like a Goldilocks zone. Um, <laughs> you know, it's sort of not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just right. Um, and that's really true. There's some people who have who have said that no, you know North Coast. San Diego County is the most temperate climate in the United States. Um, and mm. so essentially what that means is that it's not tropical, right? So it's not just, you know, warm all the time, but it's, it very, very rarely gets, gets cold, right? We haven't had a true frost here in many, many, many years. And, and, you know, with climate change, we may never see a true frost here again. Mm. Um, and um, it also doesn't get really hot. You know, the hottest mm. days in the summer, you know, people here are sweltering, you know, when it's 88, you know, and, and you know, coming from, from Washington, D.C., you know, where for four months it's above 90 degrees, you know, it, you know, this is actually very, very temperate. So plants uh -huh. are just not that stressed, right? And so that means there's a very, very wide range of plants that you can grow. Mm -hmm. um, and it also means that if you're a commercial um, uh, uh, horticulturist or, or nursery person, that you don't have to spend a lot of money on heating or cooling. Um, nice. So that, that creates some business models that are really advantageous for the grower so they can both grow tons of kinds of plants, but also they don't have to invest in either the infrastructure or the, the energy expense for heating and cooling relative to you know, folks elsewhere in the, in, the, in the country. And that created a real competitive advantage here for many, many decades for, for the growers. And, um, and we still see that there still are some parts of North County that have really active and amazing growing. Um, but, you know, that changed a little bit, essentially, when the cost of, of land, you know, went up due to real estate and it became a little more lucrative to grow houses rather than flowers. <laughs> nice, nice. And, and the people that are working, your team that's working on site, it, it made up of, of volunteers and, and, you know, employees or how, what does that look like? Yeah, all of the above. I mean, you know, this is really a village. It sort of takes everybody here. Um, so we have a, a core of, of employees. We've got about 35 you know, employees. Uh, and then we have hundreds, you know, 500 volunteers that do absolutely wow. everything for us from working in our nursery, growing plants, you know, taking tickets, teaching classes, giving tours, um, helping with administrative tasks. You know, at, we, have a, we have a volunteer carpentry group that does the most amazing, you know, high level, beautiful carpentry when we need some, some you know, work like that done. Uh, so we're so fortunate. Uh, we, mm -hmm. we have we have longstanding collaborations with with some military folks who come and do volunteering uh, and some of the Marine groups love to come here and help us with moving really heavy things, which is awesome. Uh, nice. School okay. kids, Eagle Scouts. I mean, absolutely everybody comes to the garden and, and, and does projects and, you know, we're just thrilled to have it. That's what we're here for. Well, I know we all equally enjoy it. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that there's a lot of volunteers and community members because we, we all benefit from it. So that's awesome. Well, and now, so exciting some things. You have exciting things coming up. So there's, I know there's ongoing events and activities all year long. So what are some of the events that residents or guests can enjoy? And I know there's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Um, so, uh, you know, I mean, this time of year, and I know you want to talk about this more, so I'll just sort of mention it quickly now. We're really focused on our, our holiday um, show, um, which this year is called Botanic Wonderland. Mm. Um, and that starts tomorrow, December 3rd, and runs all the way through the end of the month. 
Um, although um, there's a few Mondays where we don't have it. And of course, we, we, we don't have it on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Um, but um, so that I'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But we, we you know we love doing festivals kind of all year round here. And, and there's sort of stuff for everybody. Mm. Um, so we have, um, you know, we have a wonderful fairy festival in the spring, you know, where, where kids can come and sort of be in nature and that sort of fairy, you know, side of things. Uh, we also have a, a lizard and and um, an insect festival where kids can come and learn about insects and snakes right. and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, we just we do all kinds of stuff that that's like that. Um, and then you know we have you know every every day there's something going on here. You know whether it's a um, arts and crafts um, program for kids, whether it's an adult learning opportunity to sort of dig deeper into botany or horticulture and gardening and you know, how you might do that. Um, wonderful tours. You know, we, we have our, our 5,000 plants come from all over the world, especially the other Mediterranean regions of the world, uh, wow. which are Australia, uh, the Mediterranean basin itself. So Italy and you know, that area, um, that's, uh, the, the South Africa um, and the, the Western Southern coast of South America and here. So we have plants from all of those regions that just love this climate and you can sort of see them and learn about them and understand which ones of them, you know, really impact our lives a lot. So th there's just opportunities for that, you know, all, all the time. And then one of the things we're most proud of is, is our commitment to active children's play in nature. And so we have our two children's mm. gardens, our award-winning Hamilton Children's Garden, which is really one of the finest examples of a children's garden, I think, anywhere in the country, if not the world. But it's just the kind of place where you can bring your kids, you know, they're, they're safe there, but they're getting to explore. Um, mm. and, and so they get, to, they get to have those first, you know, few steps kind of on their own, exploring nature and you know, seeing what it's like to climb a tree and, you know, go through the water, um, but in a controlled way so that, so that parents are just as comfortable as the kids are. Um, and it's just a, a magical experience. And, you know, so I, you know, I just, all the time I, I talk to parents who goes, oh, my kids grew up at the garden, you know, and spent yes. the um, And I think it's one of the most wonderful things that we do offer the community every day of the year. Yeah, so it sounds like, uh, well, I 100% agree with all that. I mean, I think it's amazing to get kids out in nature, let them explore in safe safe spaces. Um, but it sounds like if, if, you know, for somebody who's watching or listening, it's like, hey, if I want to go just just get, you know, dip my toes in, in, in the water, so to speak, um, or, hey, I'm, I'm a full on, you know, botanist enthusiast, right? Or um, anybody can get involved to whichever degree they want, right? So if it's like, hey, I'm just going to go visit and I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go walk through the gardens and, and feel peace. I could do that. Or I can go even further and be like, Hey, I want to invest, you know, half of my week to, to the garden. Like there, there's just something to at any level that somebody can get involved. In. Absolutely. And, and we want to be that place where people can explore what level of involvement they want with not mm. much commitment, you know? So um, the first Tuesday of every month is our free Tuesday, you know, so all residents of San Diego County, which with a valid ID, you can come into the garden for free, check it out, so you can see kind of what's going on and decide if you want to come back again. Um, our, our daily admissions, our memberships are all really reasonably priced, you know, so it's not, um, you know, we're, it's, it's, you know, it's not that expensive. I think it's $85 right now for a family to be a member for the whole year. Yeah. Um, and that gets you in as much as you want to get you a discount on any special programs that we have. And so, um, you know, we're really trying to make sure that we're an accessible resource for absolutely everybody. And if anybody has any special concerns, I mean, we encourage them to contact us, a special school group, a special, you know, you know, group that you want to help get in. Or, you know, if you work with people that are disadvantaged and you want to you know, help them get access to the garden, we're just, you know, we're here for the community and, and we're excited to have those conversations and find the ways to get people here and, and, and help them enjoy the garden. Well, and I know, I know that you can have birthday parties. I've seen weddings set up, you know, dinners and banquets. So there's so much more than even just, you know, with like the children play. I go, I bring my kids to exhaust them. So they run around and have a great time. <laughs> it's such a win. Um, and then, but, how, you know, how can locals get involved? Is there, is there anything that, any way that we can get involved? I know we have our membership, but um, how can community members kind of, yeah. So, uh, so if, if for people who want to be volunteers, I mean, we sort of take volunteer applications all the time. We run volunteer orientations and trainings on at least a quarterly basis. Um, and, you know, we really encourage folks to go to our website, um, you can go under volunteering, send all the information in, let us know what kind of volunteering you want to do. If you want to be out there pulling weeds or pruning trees um, or working with kids or, you know, all that stuff that th those opportunities are there. Um, like I said, that free Tuesday is a great way to get involved for, for our military families. We have several military programs. 
um, and and I encourage people to go to to the website and take a look at them. But you know, for active duty in particular, um, you know, we always have some kind of an, an opportunity, whether it's free visit or highly discounted. Um, and and so you know, we really want to make sure that there's opportunity for people to come. You mentioned also our our other programs, you know, like uh, like weddings and banquets and retreats, um, as as well as um, as birthday parties. And so we, there's a lot of opportunity for that kind of stuff. We have a lot of clubs meet here. Um, and, you know, mostly stuff that relates to, to, to plants, you know, in some way. So we have, there's a, there's a, um, one of the local bones eye societies, you know, the people who trim the little tiny trees and, you know, make them so cute uh, and make little fairy gardens. They meet here once a month and they're always excited to have people come and join them. And, you know, there's, there's just so much of that going on. Um, really anything that, that, you know, that's plant related, whether it's understanding the local botany or being a better gardener. Or, you know, something so specific as wanting to become a bonsai master or, um, you know, wanting to learn about how fossil plants exist. You know, um, that we have we almost certainly have something for you that happens relatively frequently. here. Nice. Well, I'm going to be there in the next few weeks and we're bringing our relatives. It's a tradition. We go every Christmas, you know, every holiday season, bring our family, our guests from out of town, meet up with friends and have a great time. So I'm looking forward to it like I do every year. Awesome. It's going to be great this year. It's really going to be great. We're, we're changing around the, um, the holiday uh, display this year, and it's going to be more concentrated. So this we're, we're our grand opening of, of Botanic Wonderland is tomorrow, and it's coinciding with our grand opening of our brand new Dickinson Family Education Conservatory. Um, so we the garden spent five and a half million dollars to build a really stunning world class conservatory, which is a, a basically a greenhouse, but a giant glass showy, beautiful architectural greenhouse that houses plants unlike stuff you've ever seen before. And we've decked it out for the holidays with lights and poinsettias and other holiday flowers. And Santa will be there and you know, we'll have beer and mulled wine and food and um, snow. It's going to snow at the garden every day. No so, in San Diego, what? <laughs> we, 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 do, we do magic here. Um, <laughs> but there will be snow every single night at the Botanic Garden. And um, it's, really, it's really spectacular. And there's arts and crafts for kids and fun for the whole family. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I just want to thank you so much for being on our show. And, and we really appreciate it. And the information, it's so good for, for residents and, and out-of-town guests that are coming to visit the area. Um, I highly, highly encourage everyone to make it a, a point uh, to stop by and check it out because it's, it's an incredible place. Um, and is there anything else that you'd like to, to add that, that we haven't covered? Uh, I mean, there's so much more, but I don't want to bore everyone to death. I would say, you know, we put everything on our website. So just Google San Diego Botanic Garden or our website is sdbgarden.org um, and everything's there. You know, follow us on on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and, you know, all those things. And, um, you know, one of these days I'm going to have to start sending smoke signals. I mean, there's just so many ways of communicating with people these days. <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're, we're here to serve the community. We, we love seeing everybody here and um, and we hope to see you at the garden. Oh, well, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. I will see you in the next few weeks. And um, thank you so much for sharing that with our audience. Really appreciate it. Thank you both so much. All right. You have a great one.